Hello everyone, this is Displace, and today we will be doing a deep dive into DPS rogues for Phase 4. Just like in previous phases of Season of Discovery, this phase has added some new runes, and we've seen some additional tweaks and changes to the class as we prepare for in-game content. So if you like these guides for Season of Discovery and you want more, please like and subscribe to this channel. So for this guide, I'm going to be going over the following. Best two builds, the stat priority, rotation, and consumables. So for phase four, there are two main builds for DPS rogues, Mutilate and Saber Slash. This phase also saw changes to some of the runes to bring Backstab front and center. However, in in-game content, it is unfortunately not performing as well as the others. It does make a good leveling spec, so if you're interested in the Backstab build, I'll provide a link in the description below. Like in previous phases, Mutilate is currently the leader, with Saber Slash coming in a close second. And, like previous phases, the talents are going to be the same between the two builds, with the only difference being the runes we take. So, for both builds, here are the talents. Starting in the combat tree, these are going to be the usual talents from previous builds, going down far enough to get Blade Flurry. This is because Blade Flurry is going to be one of our two major AoE abilities. So we take three points in Lightning Reflexes and two points in Improved Sinister Strike. Improved Sinister Strike is very useful for the Saber Slash build, but for the Mutilate build, it actually only helps if we're going to be taking the Poisoned Knife Rune. More on this later. These are actually needed, though, to get further down the tree. We're going to take five points into Precision, so we can actually do damage and hit the target and three points into Improved Backstab. Improved Backstab is great for our Mutilate build because Mutilate directly benefits from anything that improves Backstab. However, for the Saber Slash build, it really doesn't do anything. So if you're looking at the Saber Slash build, feel free to play around with these three points. Then we take points in Endurance and Dual Wield Specialization so we can get Blade Flurry. Unfortunately, Rogues don't have a whole lot of AoE abilities, so Blade Flurry is one of those abilities that is going to allow us to do damage to multiple targets. In the Assassination Tree, we are going to go all the way down to Seal Fate. These are pretty much the same ones that we took last phase. So we have Malice for increased crit strike chance. And on the next row, we take all three talents. For this row, it's important to note that we are taking Improved Slice and Dice because we will not be using the Cut to the Chase rune. And I'll explain that later in the runes section. So we will want an increased uptime for our slice and dice. We are also taking one point in lethality. This is so we can pick up four points into seal fate. This is the build. It's pretty straightforward and it's going to be the same regardless of if you go mutilate or saber slash. So depending upon if you run mutilate or saber slash will depend upon your runes. So let's talk about the mutilate build first. Obviously, the hands will be our namesake rune, Mutilate. For the chest, we're going to be using Deadly Brew, as it's just crazy good since poison damage scales with our attack power. For legs, we're going with Envenom. This is going to be one of our main finishing moves. For the waist, we're going with Poison Knife. The cost of Poison Knife is affected by Improved Sinister Strike that we took in the talent tree. And because this refunds 5 energy for each application of Deadly Poison, this works really well with Deadly Brew. And depending upon your stacks of Deadly Poison, this can refund almost the entire energy spent. So it's really just using a global cooldown. If you find yourself in a fight where you are running out and back in a few times, you can change this to Shadow Step. You gain more mobility, and getting back to the boss faster can actually balance out any loss of DPS for not taking Poison Knife. For wrists, we are going to take Carnage. This adds a little bit more into the rotation, it increases your damage and provides some healing, which your healers will be thankful for. Master of Subtlety on the feet. This will allow a strong opening and allow us to use Vanish mid-fight for some additional damage increase. For the head, I'm running focused attacks, so I'm not energy starved. You can also use Honor Among Thieves if you feel like you're not building combo points fast enough. And I'm also going to be talking more about this rune and the flexibility of the build a little later. For the back, we're going to take Blunderbuss since it's a good AoE and it's much cheaper than Fan of Knives. For the rings, we're going to take Nature Specialization, which helps with our poisons, 
and dagger specialization. Now for the saber slash build, not a lot is going to change with the runes. We're going to change our hands to use saber slash, obviously. And then we're just going to change one of our rings to sword specialization. So I want to highlight that this is not an end all be all build. With all builds, this is actually going to be dependent upon your gear, the fights, and your group makeup. And I think that there's two places that we can be a little bit flexible. The biggest place to be flexible is our head rune. I was at first running Honor Among Thieves, and every hit I was getting four to five combo points. I didn't think that this was a bad thing, but I did notice my DPS was not as great as it could be. So I switched to focused attacks which I did see a slight increase in my DPS. I'm still generating some good combo points because of Seal of Fate, while also not being energy starved. And it allows a little bit more flexibility in my rotation. Honor Among Thieves is based upon the critical hits from your party members and can't happen more than once every second. Whereas Seal of Fate works off of your own critical strikes. So if your party members have more crit than you, it might make sense to take this rune over focused attacks. The second place we have some flexibility is with Blade Flurry. Although it is one of our main AoE abilities and is good when we have to cleave down adds with a boss, if you don't find yourself using it, you could put that extra point into Seal Fate. For the Mutilate build, there have been some questions on why we are taking Seal Fate if we have a rune like Honor Among Thieves. Why not buff our Mutilate by taking something like Opportunity? Well, the answer is that Mutilate is a flat DPS. So it doesn't matter what gear you have, it does 80% weapon damage plus an additional 86 with each weapon. Increasing your Mutilate is beneficial since it is one of your main abilities. However, your top damage ability is not Mutilate. Mutilate is usually third or fourth on the overall damage chart. Your top damaging ability is usually Instant Poison or Envenom, followed by Melee. Because of the Deadly Brew rune, our instant poison scales with our attack power. So the better our gear, the harder our poisons hit. And when we use Envenom, which is one of our main finishing moves, we have a 75% increased frequency of applying instant poison. So the more we can use Envenom, the more chances instant poison is applied, and the more scaled damage we do. Also, we are juggling three finishing moves now. Envenom, Slice and Dice, and Rupture. So the faster you build combo points, the easier it will be to make sure your slice and dice and rupture don't fall off. The priority for our stats is going to be as follows. Agility, attack power, crit chance, strength, hit rating, and stamina. As we see, our main stats we're looking for is agility and attack power. One point of agility gives us one point of attack power, as well as some crit. So currently, 29 points of agility gives us a 1% increase to crit. Now, I've been getting this on some of my past videos where a lot of people think one point of agility gives us two points of attack power. Unfortunately, this is not the case. I think that this changed in one of the expansions, but for classic, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So as you can see here on the screen, I'm taking this piece off. And then as I put it back on, you can see my attack power scales directly with the amount of agility that's on the gear. So attack power increases the amount of damage we deal with our attacks and abilities, and because we're using the deadly brew and in venom runes, it will also increase the damage to our instant and deadly poisons. Critical strike is next as its power lies in the fact that we'll be attacking consistently and quickly due to slice and dice which means we have more chances to crit, which also means we have more chances to build combo points due to seal fate. One point of strength grants one point of attack power, but unlike agility, it does not grant crit. This means that these two can be used interchangeably if necessary, and it also means that gear with both agility and strength on it are really good for us. Hit rating increases your chance to actually hit the target, and although this stat is important, most, if not all, of the gear we will be getting will have some kind of hit rating attached to it, so we don't have to actually go out looking for this stat. Last is stamina. Each point of stamina gives us 10 health. So this could be considered a DPS increase because it keeps us alive, which is the only way we can DPS. The rotation is going to be almost the same, but there are slight differences between the Mutilate and Saber Slash builds. 
We should always do our best to enter combat stealth to gain the benefit of Master of Subtlety. Let's talk about the rotation for the Mutilate build first. If we're stealthed, we're going to use Garrett. Then we are going to cast Mutilate to build combo points. We're going to use Poisoned Knife on cooldown. Now this does have a chance to refund your energy, so it's a really cheap ability that makes sure that we have our poisons applied on the target and gives us a combo point. We're going to cast Slice and Dice once we have five combo points. Then we're going to cast Mutilate again to build up our combo points. And as long as Slice and Dice is active, we're going to cast Rupture at five combo points. This is going to put a bleed on the target. And because we have taken the Carnage Rune, this increases our DPS going forward. If both Slice and Dice and Rupture are active, we're going to cast Envenom at five combo points. So for this rotation, you should be able to get two or three Envenoms before you have to recast Slice and Dice and Rupture. So for the Saber Slash build, we're not going to be using Rupture, as Saber Slash already applies a bleed effect, which we need for the Carnage Rune. So if Stealth, we're still going to use Garrett. We're going to cast Saber Slash to build up our combo points, and we're going to use Poison Knife on cooldown. We're going to cast Slice and Dice once we have five combo points, and if Slice and Dice is active, we're going to cast Venom at five points. So as you can see, the Saber Slash build is a little easier than the Mutilate build but Mutilate is still outperforming Saber Slash. During the fight, we can use Vanish to refresh our Master of Subtlety. We're going to use Kick where we need to interrupt anything, and Cold Blood should be used on cooldown. If we need to DPS multiple targets, we can use Blade Flurry and Blunderbuss. To start with, we do not need to apply poisons to our weapons because we're using Deadly Brew. However, Phase 4 does come with a new poison. Occult Poison. The cool thing with this is that it acts like Deadly Poison. So it has perfect synergy with both builds. This not only puts poison damage on the target, but increases non-physical damage by 2%. So this will increase the damage by all magic users in the raid, as well as your poisons, since they are nature damage. If you don't want to use this poison, you can instead use Elemental Sharpening Stones, which increases your crit by 2%. If you have a druid or shaman in your group, you only need to apply the sharpening stone or poison on your offhand, as your main hand weapon will be utilizing wild strikes or wind fury totem. So some of the consumables that we will be using are going to be elixir of the mongoose, which gives us plus 25 agility and 2% crit, juju power or elixir of giants, which gives you either 30 or 25 to strength. And it does stack with Elixir of Mongoose. We can also use Ground Scorpok Essay. This is from a repeatable quest in the Blasted Lands. It gives you plus 25 to agility and also stacks with the other elixirs. We also have Jujumite or Winterfall Firewater. This gives you either plus 40 or plus 35 to attack power respectively. Flask of the Titans gives you plus 1200 to health. And for our food buff, we're going to go with Grilled Squid. This gives us plus 10 to agility. Now the squid used to be only fishable in the winter, but they now have a chance to be in a damaged undermined supply crate. And then we have Thistle Tea, which restores 100 energy. Some other consumables that we may want. Free Action Potion for bosses with stuns. And Greater Fire Protection Potion, which absorbs 1900 to 3200 fire damage. The Fire Protection Potion is going to be critical in Molten Core. I think Phase 4 has added a little bit more into this build, which is really fantastic. And although Mutilate still is outperforming every other build, I think that some of the other builds are getting closer. And I hope to see how the rest of the phases go as we continue along with the progression of the raids. So let me know what you think about this build in the comments below. And I hope you've enjoyed it, and I will see you in Azeroth.